Hello everybody, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. Tonight we are going to talk about how you go about evaluating a user interface as a part of your software requirements gathering. Um, this actually serves two purposes, right? So for all you folks who are doing software requirements, this is going to be a, a helpful session. But for you folks who are looking to move in to software requirements, this will, this is something you can start doing now. Start practicing, start putting together examples so that when you go for that job, you'll have the examples, you'll be able to talk about it. So this one is a win-win. Let's dive in, shall we? Hello everybody, my name is Kathleen and you're at the BA Zone Live. Tonight we're gonna to talk about how you go about evaluating a user interface as a part of your software requirements gathering, right? So if you're doing any other requirements gathering, this is probably not going to be quite as helpful for you, but if you are working in software and or looking to work in software, this is going to be a super valuable session for you because this is something you can start to do before you actually have the job. You can actually use examples of you figuring this out to get the job. And of course, for anybody who is a fellow software developer requirements person, you know, this is a big part of what we do, right? But not everybody has been through the process of doing the UX. Sometimes you have a user interface or a UX team that's taking care of it. But for a lot of us, it falls on us just like everything else does, right? <laughs> that's what happens. We get all the stuff that there's nobody else to cover. So we're gonna jump in. So we're gonna do something with some very popular sites right now. Well some levels of popular, but it's in the news right now. I thought it would make it more fun. Um, and we're gonna walk through the whole process. So let me just, uh, looks like we're all good. Yes, okay, so let's just dive in because this is going to be a busy one. Uh, let me take that down. So the way that we're going to do this is, we are going to look at three different sites and kind of walk through them. Now you can decide which one that you're working for and which one you're comparing against. I'll leave that up to you. So we're gonna take a look at Mixer, right? Because we're all hearing about Mixer these days. Uh, we're gonna look at Twitch. And we're going to work, look at DLive, okay? So these are, for those of you who maybe have never seen these before, um, these are three different live streaming sites, okay? And live streaming is getting a lot of press right now because a there's been a bit of a shakeup in the industry right now, um, which is neither here nor there as part of this conversation. But it's a really good example of the type of work that you have to do, especially because this is the type of site, right? This is the type of application that needs to work in the web. It needs to work on little mobile devices, the bigger mobile devices. So it, it has all of the pieces. We're gonna focus mo mainly on the, the desktop one for now, um, mainly because this would turn into a 16 hour course if I tried to walk you through everything, but we'll, we'll touch on some of the other stuff. All right, so as a part of this, what we're going to do, no, let's go back here. Um, in order to really evaluate, so let me, the first mistake most people make when they try to evaluate his uh, user interface is they look at it and they say, I like this one because I like blue, or I like this one because I don't like dark mode, or I like this one because yellow is my favorite color. These are not valid ways to evaluate a user interface. However, the rest of the people on your team being humans are going to do that because that is how humans react to things. It's our job to be analytical about this. So the best way to go about this is to pick something. So let's talk about that. What is she talking about? Pick something, pick what? <laughs> what we're talking about here is you wanna pick tasks that your community is going to need to accomplish and then go through that in the different ones and see what works, what doesn't, and then take the best from every place that you look at. Um, you wanna start off with the logical things, but you also wanna spend some time as you go through this process going through the more, what they call fringe elements, right? So power user kind of things, one-off kind of things, all that kind of good stuff. So what we're gonna do to start with is, I'm not logged in on any of these. Yes, I do have accounts on all of these. Um, I live stream, right? That's what I do. So we're gonna start not logged in. So we're gonna start off as somebody who is new to the site and looking at how they would figure out what's going on and maybe start to look for some content to test drive it because that's how most people approach these different uh, platforms is, they go, they look to see if there's something interesting and only after they find something interesting do they actually log on. All right, so let's start with that. Alrighty, uh, I should take that down. There we go. All right, so since DLive is up, we'll start with that. So this is sort of a newer player, right? So if you are a new person to this, right? How would you go about 
finding something, right? Most people are going to look around here, right? And they're going to like, okay, log in. I, I'm seeing some examples here. Looks like I can kind of click through some stuff. But let's say I'm not into gaming, okay? So we're going to make this a little bit challenging right from the beginning because most of these are very strong on gaming presentation, not so much on other stuff. So maybe you're like, okay, well, gaming, yeah, I know everybody does that. Let me, I want to know what else it does. And so you're looking, you're like, okay, don't know these people, don't care, this isn't what I'm looking for. So what they're looking for is a search. They're like, oh, okay, there's a search up here. So let's see what happens. So let me see. If I put in something, let's say I do business, right? All right, so then now a user who is putting this in has expectations, right? They are expecting to get search results that use this in the title or in the description or maybe in the uh, username, something like that. So let's find out what happens. Okay, so this would be a question now. Does, what does this mean to a user? Does this mean that they don't have this content? Does this mean that only that they only provide channel information, which really is like the streamer's name? So this is more questions than answers, right? Because at this point, if that's all somebody is interested in, they may walk away, which is not optimal, right? Um, it also probably doesn't match well to the user's expectations. So I would take note of that. Um, let's go back to looking at it and say, well, okay, so if we're looking around at it, we're saying maybe this could be better. Maybe this could have a different result set. Maybe this could be presented a little bit differently, but we're just gathering information, right? So this is initial thoughts. So what you're going to want to do at this point is you're going to want to write those initial ideas down because they are only going to happen once, right? You only get the one chance to make a first impression. So as you're going through this, um, if you're in a work environment, you're going to want to write down your thoughts as you're having them. Just free associate and write down whatever. What I do when I'm working from home is I actually fire up a device and I record what's happening and I talk about what my what my thought process is, what my expectations are as I'm going through it so that I can go back and reference it in context later. Like I said, it does not work in a noisy office environment, but it's something I choose to do when I'm in a quieter place or if I can steal an office for an hour or two while I'm doing this. So it's just something to consider. But one way or another, it's really important as you go through this, as you're having those initial thoughts, get them down because after you've looked at it for five minutes, you'll already be too experienced to have those thoughts again. Okay? All right, so we're gonna keep going here. So, <coughs> excuse me. So that's it. So now I'm gonna switch over to Twitch, okay? And I'm gonna to try to do the same exact thing. You wanna do this in little bites. You don't wanna to go too far down with any one. You wanna keep it fresh in your mind as you go from one to one. Um, in a really optimal situation, you would have this maybe up on two or three monitors so you could look at them all at the same time, but I can't really stream that to you. So <laughs> we, have to, we have to work with what we've got here. All right, so. Same thing. So we're like, okay, but here, okay, so they've got the same kind of thing. Like, okay, I can flip through and you've got a couple of examples here, you know, just kind of lucked out that, okay, you know, Twitch, I know that that kind of gets into the business stuff, you know, and then there's already, I can see that there's makers and there's science and technology. So I'm getting a feel that there's more stuff. So let me see. I, they've got the search bar, nice center, prominent. So let me see if I do business here. First of all, it gives me the type ahead, which the other one didn't, did it? See, now this is the kind of thing. It's like, okay, did this give it to me or not? Let me try it again. No, there is no type ahead on DLive. But the type ahead here is kind of nice because right away it's telling me, and look, there is something here for business, so let's see what comes up. Sure enough, I've got channels, I've got categories, I've got past videos. So that's giving me a little more and it's telling me that it's just showing me a few and that there's more that I can see. So right here, this is a very different experience than you just saw on DLive, right? This one's got the type ahead, which gives you a little bit of a clue, could also help you kind of narrow down if you were looking for something slightly different, right? But it's also telling you, whoops, oh, while well, I'm talking to you, you can't see that. Um, it's also telling you that there are some different options for you, right? You can look at channels that are about business, you can look at actual categories of business, or you can look at past videos that mention business. So that's, that's definitely a win. So I'm kind of liking that, kind of making notes on that. All right, so now we're going to go over and we're going to compare that to Mixer. So Mixer, again, like everybody evidently is using this, right? So clearly, you know, if, if we are working for one of these companies, you know, the carousel thing seems to be pretty important. Everybody seems to be doing that. I'm assuming that they tested that, so that's pretty good. Obviously, we've got some promotion up here because they've got this big deal going on. And then they've got it broken out into games, uh, custom content, up and coming, top stream. So not a good feel for what kind of information. 
So let's see if we have, let me go back up here. Hmm, but there's no, there's no place to search here. That's kind of weird. But if you noticed when I was scrolling, one did kind of pop up, but it's all the way down here. So that raises a question, right? Is anybody gonna see that? If I wasn't consciously looking for that and comparing them, would I have even noticed this? It would seem like this would be better up top, like Twitch had, right? And DLive had it, it's just it wasn't doing the type ad. But now that we found it, let's see what happens when we use it. Hey Jason, how you doing? Good to see you. So let's see, same thing here. We're gonna type in business, bless you Murphy. Well, that's weird. The whole page just moved as I was doing that. And no type ahead. But I am getting some results. Let's see what we've got here. So it looks like these are channels that reference it. Now, I, I should actually say, you know, I'm doing this live, so I don't know what's going to come up. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you know, things happen. All right, so it looks like we've got a lot of people with business in their name, but I'm not seeing anything else. I'm not seeing like videos or anything. So again, did not meet my expectation, did not meet what it was I was trying to find. Kind of interesting. So now I do notice here that it's got these filters. So let's see if the filters give us anything. So games. All right, let's try that and see what it does. We don't find anything. Well, I will say at least it didn't waste my time, right? So I turned that on and right away it said, yep, yeah, no, we're not gonna have anything for you on that. Um, and let's see, so sound, video effects, other creative experiences. Yeah, that's not really what I'm looking for. The audience, okay, that's kind of nice to have. The language is kind of nice to have, but again, nothing that lets me search for videos that were named some or in the description mentioned business or channels right? I, I guess these are channels. I'm not completely sure from the way it's presented. So, and there's certainly not a category coming up that says business, right? So this all kinds of feeds into the thought process that you're going to have as you go through this, right? Because it's like, okay, is this going to provide what I want? So these are the kinds of things that you would want to jot down. And I mean, if, I, if this was me, right, and I was doing this for whichever company, right away, my focus would be Twitch does it right. Twitch is doing a good job of bubbling up the options to let me know what might or might not be available, what might or might not be a good fit for me. And that is something that is important, in, I think, for any user, but in particular for the users who are brand new and trying to see whether or not it's worth their time. Because let's face it, there's lots of competition out there, not just for streaming platforms, but for your attention in general on the web, right? So you really only have a few seconds, a minute or so at best for somebody to decide whether or not it's worth sticking around. So I think, you know, for me, if I was doing it, I would say, okay, I would be taking some snaps of how this was done. Let me clear this out, right? So I would be saying, okay, the type ahead, the positioning for this, and I would be screen capping that. So let's, let's talk about the screen capping. So, you know, our favorite tool here, right? <laughs> our favorite tool, hands down, is Snagit. Um, and this is another example of where Snagit is all kinds of handy. So let me bring that up for you. Okay, and I should get that out of the way. So what I would do right here is I would do a capture that shows all of this stuff, right? So this way I, I can see that there is, you know, this whatever this stuff was up here. So these are the channels, right? And I can't quite get that all in here. I mean, you could, you could cheat, right? So if you wanted it all to fit, you could definitely try to do this. Okay, and that way, when you took your screen capture, you could see everything. Uh, unfortunately, I just made that go away. There we go. Um, so that's one way to do it, so you could see the results. It's, you know, six of one half dozen the other, but the point is what I try to do when I do these screen captures is I try to take one that represents the overall experience the best. Later on, I would get into doing more detailed ones, but while I'm just doing that high level collection of information, this is how I would do it. So I would come here and I would do my, now I always do this kind of a snap with as much of the picture as I can get, but I always make sure that I get the URL so that I can go back to it later. Cause things change. All right, so now I would have that available to me in my reference library. So does, is this kind of making sense to everybody? It's all kind of hopefully coming together. So what you're doing is you're taking 
some goal, right? Some task. And then you're going to test it in each one. And then you're going to take the bits that work the best across of them. Now, just to refresh your memory, when we did it in DLive, we only got the channels back. But you still might want to go ahead and screen cap this because maybe you're going to want to use that later for reference. Whoops, where did that go? I tried to make my here. I can do it this way. I tried to get everything out of the way so we wouldn't get distracted. So here, you know, it's like, okay, I'm not loving this, but you know what? For discussion's sake with the rest of my team, maybe I'm going to want this. So I'm going to grab this too so that we can comparison job. All right. And then I'm going to go over to Mixer and I'm going to do the same thing. And what you're doing here is you're building up a reference library for yourself and then also for discussion with your team down the road. Um, because again, you want to do this in the moment because things constantly change online. So if you're having a discussion and you're saying, well, you know, they did this at the next thing and somebody goes in and they, they say, well, it's not doing that now. It's like, okay, well, that's fine. Here's what I saw the day I did it. They must have updated it because that's going to happen all the time. <laughs> so that's fine. All right. So we've got that where I just want to do a quick check here. It looks like we're, we're good. Everybody's getting the point here. Okay, good. All right. Let's keep driving in here. So now let's pick something else because it's not fair. You can't, you know, make these kinds of decisions on just one thing. So let's say now our person or our people are looking around and they've decided that, okay, they want to go and they want to make an account, right? Because, well, let's, let's just back up. Let, let's say that they want to go in and they want to look at something, right? They want to watch a stream. So we'll just go back to the beginning on all of these. Actually, let's, let me see if this works. Okay, I think that will work. Hello, I'm down here. Um, so, all right, let's go back to the Mixer beginning. Let's go back to Twitch beginning. We'll start everything from the same point. We'll do everything from the homepage, right? So everybody's starting off from the same point. So again, we'll start with DLive. So let's say that they just want to dive in. They just want to get a feel for what it's like on this platform. So let's pick something here. We'll go into Minecraft, right? That should be pretty, <laughs> this, this, like I said, this is a little dangerous because you never know what's going to happen. Okay, so I'm clicking on this and my expectation is that I would be shown the Minecraft options. But that's not what's happening. Let's see if I click on this one. Nothing changes. So again, to me, that's kind of weird. Why can't I click on this and go see all of the Minecraft? So let's see what happens on Twitch if I do something similar. So let's see. Okay, we'll try Minecraft here too, since it's right here. So if I click on Minecraft here, okay, now it's showing me all of the Minecraft that's live. So that you can see here it says live. So I can go through and I can, you know, take a look. And so you can see which, what language it's in. I thought you could see, but I guess not today. Um, I thought you could see how many people were watching, but I guess they took that off. All right, so let's look at a family friendly one. Um, not sure what language that's in. Let's see if we can find another one. Well, here's kind of a good one. This has got closed captions. Let's look at that. So you click on it and you get actually to that stream. Now we're going to have to watch an ad, unfortunately, because they have to make money. Come on, hurry up. So, you know, you've got the, the person's, you know, name here, their ID. You've got the chat here. You've got a video that's going on way too long. This ad is going way too long. I need to shorten these up. But this is another note that you could make because it's like this makes it very hard for people who are looking for new content to watch to do so. Because who wants to sit through all of these different ads that go on for a minute or two at a time? So, all right. So we clicked on, you know, we went, we clicked on Minecraft. We saw what was available and we got in and we got to see somebody who's actually playing Minecraft. That would be a reasonable expectation of somebody who's coming in to look at this. So now let's go to Mixer. Oh, it didn't go back. Okay, so now we're back in Mixer. Now let's see if we can find Minecraft, just for the heck of it, since we're all in the same world here. Lots of Fortnite. I probably should have gone with Fortnite. <laughs> all right, I'm not seeing Minecraft here. So let's see if we go into games. But right now on Twitch, we didn't have to leave the home page. On Mixer, we didn't, but we also didn't. On um, DLive, we also didn't, but we didn't go anywhere. So now let's look here and see. Let's just scroll. Oh, here we go. Here's Minecraft. And again, I clicked on it and I got a display of all of the different live Minecraft players at this moment. And let's see. We're seeing pretty much, we're not seeing language. 
we're seeing their names and the title on it. But that's it. All right, so let's just roll the dice and click on somebody and see. Um, let's just try this one. Uh, let's not do that one. <laughs> okay, so at least it warned us, right? That's good. Some of them are not really that bad, but they just do it so they don't get kids in there. Um, all right, let's try this one. Nope, okay, everybody on Minecraft is doing mature audiences only. Okay, not this one. All right, so you clicked on it, and sure enough, you got into somebody who is actually playing Minecraft, so that's good. So now we've been successful on two of them, right? On two of them, we wanted a specific category. We were able to find it, we were able to get into it, and we were able to do all of this without signing in, without creating an account or signing in. So that is something else I would note, right? So this would be a part of this process. Hey, John, yeah, right? Yeah, well, I'm taking my life in my hands doing this live, but I didn't know how else to do it effectively. But yeah, it is a, I'm a little bit on a tightrope tonight. So again, we have com now completed two reasonable user tasks, right? We went in and just tried to figure out what the heck we were looking at. We went in and we tried to find a specific category, a specific game in this case, and we were able to click on one to see who's playing live right now and go and click on one and see it on everything except DLive. So let's go back to DLive and see if we can figure out what's going on. Just for the heck of it, I'm going to refresh just because I know Comcast is having problems tonight. So maybe, I mean, I'm not on Comcast, but we could be using the Comcast backbone at some point. So let's make sure. Um, for a kid's game, it has a lot of adults. Oh, you mean um, Minecraft? Yes, absolutely. That's very true, actually. It's very popular with the adults. I mean, they won't say they're playing with their kids, but it's very popular with the adults. Um, just to get off topic a little bit, the Lego lawyer, um, he's got a server just for his own, which is somebody we watch on Twitch. Um, so yes, it is. It's uh, it's more common than people would think. All right, so let's take a look now at the poor folks over here on, well, not the poor folks, but these folks over on DLive. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on, right? So I, I refreshed. So we're back at the home page Now, if I come down here, right? So we see Minecraft is right here. Okay, so my expectation is I should be able to click on it and it implies that it's clickable. You can see I've got the little hand, right? It goes from the arrow to the hand. But when I click on it, nothing happens and there's no explanation why. So this is a bad experience that we wanna make sure we don't replicate as we go through anywhere. Um, I'm gonna just see if I can figure out why. So if I go here, oh, is that what it did? Okay, so let's, let's refresh. I think I figured out what's going on. This is why you have to do it. You have to pay attention and you, you can't, you can't, I was gonna say you shouldn't, but you could do it, but you can't. You really can't do this kind of work unless you're focused in a quiet environment because it's all these little nuances and you gotta be able to listen to the little alarm bells going off in your head like, what just happened? Or that didn't match what I was expecting um, because that's what's going on. So I think I figured out what happened here, but let's find out for sure because I have a sneaking suspicion it's just a bad UI, um, which could be fixed, but let, let's, let's talk through this. Okay, ready? So I refreshed, I'm gonna refresh again just so you see it. Do, 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 do. Okay, and so we've decided, okay, look, oh, Minecraft, I like Minecraft. Now, I just wanna show you. So down here, it looks like it's a mix of different games right now. Uh, let's see, there's some kind of a soccer game. There's some kind of a land grab kind of one. So there's a mix of things. I have a sneaking suspicion, I know what happened. So now I'm gonna click on Minecraft. Now, even though I got no clue what just happened. I think what happened is it became Minecraft down here. No, it didn't. It just so happens that there is one here. Well, no, here's so it looks. Yeah, so it looks like, yes, it is. It did make more of the Minecraft, but maybe not all of them. But the point is that if that, if that is what's happening, what should have happened is you should have clicked on Minecraft and the page should have readjusted to show you Minecraft if that was the approach they were gonna take. Personally, I would have done this differently, but that's a conversation for a different day. So, but that looks like that's what happened. So we're gonna verify that. We're gonna refresh it again. Okay, and I'm gonna look down here and there is no Minecraft. Okay, so there's no Minecraft here at all, right? If you're looking around. So, now I'm gonna come up here again and I'm gonna hit this and I'm gonna come down here and sure enough, 
there's Minecraft, okay? Minecraft PS4, Minecraft 1.14, so on and so forth. Oh, well, that's interesting, Jason. I didn't realize you'd never taken a look at this. Yes. Um, it is. It, it's, you know, it's the same but different. All these are the same but different. So I'm, I'm glad you're, you're finding this helpful. That's cool. All right, so let's pick one. Now, of course, again, we're not given any indication of age range or, but we are being told language, but that's it. So let's see, let, let's roll the dice. Okay, somebody's saying that they're chill. Let's hope that they're really chill. There's only one person, so it shouldn't be too bad in the chat. Um, okay, and so, yes, that, this does look like Minecraft. Wow, she has got a lot of stuff on her screen, but hey, personal choices. Okay, so we did finally find Somebody playing Minecraft on DLive, but wow, that was, that took a lot of guessing in order to get there. So again, as I'm going through, I've been making notes and I, I would, as I'm going through this too, is, this is why I like to record them because I can always go back and map it. If not, I try to map it as I go through. So DLive, you know, you start on the home page, you find this thing, you know, halfway down the page, you click on it. You have to scroll down. Like I would put all that down so that again, later on when I'm talking with the team, we could lay these all out in front of us at the conference table or put them up, you know, in a shared view if we're doing an online meeting and, and see all of that because this is what you're trying to figure out. You're trying to figure out what's the optimum path. What's the most logical thing? What are the things that you notice when you look at the page and you don't when you're new to this? And it's all part of the way to go thing, to look at things. Um, so let's see. So John says it's possible one of them has Minecraft tag, but they weren't playing it. Right. And, and that's why I, I looked around because it's like that does happen. So people will start playing a game and then they'll change their mind. They'll get bored or they'll get distracted or whatever, but they forget to change their title. So I would give all of the platforms a pass on that because that's up to the streamer to get right. But, you know, in all these cases, only Twitch really made it easy and clear where you were going right from the start. Mixer probably falls into spot number two on that because you did finally get there after you figured it out. Um, DLive for me was a fail. DLive only because I do user interface and I have been through this process so many times did my brain go, you know, they may not have done this right. And that would make, that's what made me think to go down and look because that's the kind of detail that probably was left out of the requirements. And so the developer conveniently didn't even question it. I'm just saying. This was a good day for me to be doing this because I've actually had several conversations like this with the development team about things. I'm like, really? Really? You were there when we talked this, about this. But that's why everything has to be in the requirements. That's why I do interactive comps because, for example, today when somebody said, well, you know, I don't see that exact wording in here. And I'm like, well, that's why you have the interactive comp because when you go through it, I brought it up in the meeting in front of everybody. I'm like, and you click because yeah, it was about where to click. Um, and he hid like the, the, the trigger for somebody to get from one view to the next, like into this little tiny corner. I'm like, no, it's the whole row. And I show that that's how the interactive comp worked. And that's why I do interactive comps, but that's, that's just food for thought. Okay. So next, oh, let's say John's agreeing with me. If John's agreeing with me, he can be on the screen. I, I would let him if it wasn't. I totally agree. That's why I quit telling people about DLive. Yeah. Um, you know, to be fair, so, you know, they are newer to this. Um, so like maybe in this case, you know, you're working for them, right? And so maybe you've been hired as part of the team to help DLive up their game. So this is why you would go through and you would look at the more successful ones and say, okay, we're doing this right, we're not doing this right. Um, but you wanna have these real examples for people to walk through and you wanna tie it to the actual user tasks, the reasonable user tasks and goals as you go through this, because again, you don't have their attention for long. All right, so now we're gonna go all the way back. I'm just gonna refresh everybody and I'll bring you back. Like I said, so this, let me just take a, a quick break here and remind you that um, we are in all the places that you would expect. So if you have a question about this, if you'd like to learn more about this, so on and so forth, we have a website, thebazone.com. You can go find us on Twitter, um, it's at thebazone. Instagram, Periscope, Facebook, YouTube, we are in all the places. Um, you can go there if you are looking for more information, if you'd like to suggest a show topic, um, or if you are just looking to learn more about being a BA in the real world, building requirements, all that kind of stuff. There's a blog that's got all kinds of information on the um, 
on the website. We share information on the Twitter, you know, that's sort of like industry specific kind of stuff. So feel free. Also, if you'd like to stay on top of this, if you'd like to catch our next shows, um, you can join the mailing list, which is the BAZone.com forward slash mailing list. Don't worry, we are not selling your name to anybody. This is just so we can send you an email that lets you know about the shows. But even better than that, are you ready for this one? We still have the survey book. So if you haven't um, caught the last couple weeks, uh, we were talking about using surveys as part of your requirements gathering. So if you want to join the mailing list and get a freebie, instead of just going to the site, you can just go to uh, the BAZone.com forward slash survey ebook. Um, and then not only do you join the mailing list, but you get a free ebook that has all kinds of helpful information about running your surveys as part of your requirements gathering. Okay. All right. Now that we got that out of the way, back on topic. So we're going to do one more because I knew the show was going to run long. Um, so next we're, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we've taken the person from coming to the site called, what is this I'm looking at? to I want to find something specific to see if this is a good platform for me. Now let's say that they've decided, yep, I love this place. I want to sign up. Let's see how complicated that process is. I should have had a drum roll for this. <laughs> All right, let's switch over here. Ah, what the hell? I might as well be on the screen too, right? Hello, I'm still here. Okay, so we're going to start with DLive because that's been our process so far. And just to remind you, like, as I would go through this normally, like, I would be taking screen caps as I go through if I wasn't already recording this, which, by the way, is something you can do with um, Snagit. This is not a paid endorsement at all. This is just something, this tool is unbelievably reasonably priced and all kinds of powerful. So you can actually record your screen and yourself on microphone if you want. Um, as you're going through this. So whichever way you do it, if you want still images or if you want to do video, this is the tool. Um, I'm just trying to speed things up as I'm explaining this. All right, so now we're at DLive. We've decided we like DLive. We're finding what we want here. This one works for us. So how do I join? How do I sign up? What is the process? Now this they did make pretty clear, right? Because it's right here at the top and it's all the way over at the right, just for general purposes, if you haven't had a lot of UI training, people start, people, especially on the web, they, they start at the left in the upper corner. They expect to see your logo there. They expect that logo to be clickable so that you can get back to the homepage, which is all true here. The other active spot is all the way over to the right, and that's where they've got their sign up and their login. So that's really well done. So let's click in and see. So this is my other account. Sorry. So it would come up like this. <laughs> And there, so you can, if I clicked on it by mistake and I had an account, I could log in or I can sign up. And it looks pretty simple. It looks like you can sign in with an email address and just create a password. Notice no two password thing here, which is good. Um, or you can use an existing Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube account. So that's pretty good. That's pretty standard. So that's something I would screen cap as I was going through. Let's take a look at Twitch. Oh, see, I'm sorry. Somehow it logged me in, even though I logged out before I started this. Okay. So same thing here. So, you know, you've got your icon over here, which brings me back home. Um, but then over here in the same exact spot, you've got login and you've got sign up and you click on that. And again, it's my other account. I have many jobs. Okay. So it will come up without the red lines here normally. Um, and you could also, if you made the mistake, you could log in, but you can just come here and you can sign up. Boy, it really wants me to reuse my stuff. I think, to be honest, that's not the, the app that is my browser doing that. So they want a little more information, right? So they want you to specify a username. Okay, they want the password. They're only asking for it once, which is nice, but it is nice that they give you some information. It would be ideal if they had that before you made a mistake. But they're also asking for date of birth and email. Now, that's a conversation you would have to have with your team. Some people don't like to give out um, date of birth. People don't like to give it, just lie. So, um, but that, you know, so that would, your legal department would probably have to get involved in that, but it's just something else to consider, something else to look at. They're also asking for an email, which makes sense, obviously. Um, you can sign up. And the only other thing that you can choose is Facebook, which is kind of interesting. I don't know why. Twitch, which is an Amazon company, is pushing you to Facebook so clearly and not the other options, but whatever, that's the choice that somebody made. So that's the other option here. Now let's look at it in Mixer. And sure enough, it's the same thing. You've got your logo here, but all the way over into the right, you've got sign in. But hey, I don't wanna sign in, I need to create an account. So that actually could be a problem. 
because some people are going to be like, well, okay, I don't have a sign in where maybe it's under more. Uh, I don't see it. I don't see it in any of these. How do I sign in? Now, yes, now those of us who are more comfortable on the web realize that if we click on this, we're probably going to get the option to also create an account. But again, it's something to think about. It's another stumbling block, possibly. It's another friction point, and you don't want to have those if you can avoid it because all you want to do is get people interested, engaged, and signed up as smoothly as possible. So let's try this and see if it works. And sure enough, it does. So you can use your Microsoft account. I'll spare you my rant on that. Um, and it definitely looks like they're pushing that, right? Because they're sign in with Microsoft or create one. But if you look down here, it does give you options to sign in other ways. Again, this is my browser trying to make me reuse the stuff that I've just used. Whoops, come back. Oh, to heck with it, I'm just gonna leave it. Um, so you can use, uh, you know, an email or a password, right? Or you can create via Twitter account or your Discord account. So however you want to do it, you're creating your login through logging in. Now this is not the common pattern out there, but I will say that I have started to see it more often because people are under the assumption that it's a little bit easier if you're doing it for mobile, which a lot of people will do because all these things work on mobile, whether you do it through the web browser, the web browsers all work on mobile. Um, you can either go with a desktop or a mobile view and they all have apps. Um, I think that that theory has not been proven out yet. I would want to do a lot of user testing before I went ahead and did that, but it is another thing to consider. So we are really far into the show, but I just kind of wanted to walk you through the, the thought process and the idea of how you do it. You don't just go in and say, I like these colors, this is pretty, because that is how everybody else is going to do it. It's our job to go in and look at these things from the practical standpoint, right? From the realistic, how people are gonna work with it, the user experience, the user flow, all of that stuff is what we need to be looking at, not, gee, I like that color. <laughs> and I trust you, you will hear that, you will. Um, so that's how you're going to start going through this. Now, what I'm going to do is, I knew this was going to be a long one. So next week, we're going to continue this whole um, line of thought here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you then would take the pieces that you like best and create examples so that you can communicate as a part of your process with your team. And then as part of the requirements process, what, what it is that you're recommending, okay? Because that's really our job. A lot of people think the BAs are just about recording what went on in a meeting, that's not it. Our job is to gather the requirements from the business, what is their goal, find out what the users are looking for, and then combine everything to make the best suggestion for how it should work going forward. Um, and so this is what we're gonna cover on the next one, how you can put together comps, because I can tell you, let me just show you real quick, from a, from a lifetime of doing this, um, if you went in, okay, are you really not going to let me back? Let me back. Okay, this at least gave me the little X. That's good. That's another point I noticed. Okay, this gave me the X. Okay, so you might think that you don't need to do rough comps, but I promise you, if you go in and you have conversations and you go, well, here I like, you know, the way that we're featuring, you know, active users here, but here I like the search, and here, you know, I like this carousel people are not going to be able to keep track of what you're talking about. They're not going to remember it. They're not going to be able to do the comparison. So next week, I'm going to show you how you take the pieces that you like from the different ones that you've looked at and cobble them together to do a, frankly, quick and dirty, okay, quick and rough, if you prefer, comp so that you can then focus everybody. After you've talked through all this, you can focus them in on one example so that you can talk about it reasonably without them being distracted by everything else that's going on, okay? Alrighty, hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully everybody has enjoyed it. Um, let's see, it looks like John's got an ax to grind Microsoft. Just a reason, another reason for me not to like Mixer, Microsoft login, stopping right before it gets, yeah, well, let me too. Okay, the whole Microsoft login thing, I could go on for days, but I'm going to spare you people that. Isn't that nice of me? Um, but I agree, yes, there are, there are many problems in the Microsoft login world. Um, but okay, the good news is, John, is you don't have to use it. Um, I think you created an account already, but yeah, so you can use, you can go around it. 
just for information, you, uh, unless you're trying to use the Android app. If you're trying to use the Android app, the only way that you can do it is with Microsoft Logon. But that's another part of this kind of information gathering that you would need to do because after you do this on the desktop in the browser, you would need to replicate those, these exact processes, the same things that we just did. What is this that I'm looking at? How does it work? Does this have content I like? Let me see if I can find one thing I like. How do I sign up? All of those things that we just did, you would have to do on here. And to be honest, what you would also want to do, so this is in full screen mode. What you would want to do is you would want to do it in a smaller view because not everybody has big monitors or not everybody likes to run in full screen mode. So you would want to compare how it flows, how responsive it is, how it changes. And you would want to repeat all of the things we just talked about in these all other views also. So it is a time consuming thing. Um, that's why you're going to want to plan it out beforehand because you don't want to waste time sitting here going, well, what should I try next? So you're going to want to, you know, on a piece of paper, just write, jot down real fast. Okay, well, what are the top five things that our users are going to need to do? Start focus more on the new people in the beginning, especially if that is the goal of the business is to bring more people on board, which is what all these people are going to be trying to do right now. But you're also going to want to do it from the standpoint of somebody who maybe has worked in one and not in the other. So they have something to compare it against and then also a power user just to make sure that you're covering everybody. All right. So I hope you'll come join me next week um, in the same usual place here. Um, and we will talk through how to actually build out these really rough comps. Trust me, you do not need to be an artist. You don't need to have years of experience using your, doing user experience. I'm going to show you ways to actually cobble together these comps from what you're looking at, these real examples, in just a few minutes um, using our favorite tool. All right. Thank you all so much. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, if you have comments, if you want more information, you can reach out here at thebazone.com. There's a contact form there. You can also reach out on Twitter uh, at the BA Zone. You can either DM us or tweet at us, whatever works better for you. And just as a reminder, you can still get the survey ebook if you'd like it. Um, so this would then sign you up for our mailing list and you get the free book, or you can just sign up for the mailing list. We're all kinds of flexible here, whatever works from you. If you don't want the ebook, you don't have to take the ebook. <laughs> See, because we are all about doing the things that work best for your tasks and your goals. That's what we do. Okay. Have a good one, everybody. Hope you're having a, a good summer so far, and we will see you next week. Same time, same channel. Have fun. Bye.